I find it really fun and challenging to transform inexpensive items such as these solar lights from Dollar Tree into something really cool. So let's see how I do. Hey, it's Donna. I'm happy to have you here today. So for this first project, you're going to want to grab one of these Dollar Tree solar lights that have the flame glow. It is a really cool solar light. You're also going to need a cylinder vase. This one is a five and a half inches tall by three and a quarter inches wide. You also need some of this Dollar Tree window uh, cling. And this one has got a really beautiful botanical print on it. It has flowers and leaves. I'm just going to trim off my excess end here and then I'm going to be measuring the amount that I need. We already took a measurement of the height so I'm just going to mark that off and I'm actually going to make it so it's just slightly less than five and a half because the bottom of my vase is a little bit beveled and I know that this won't uh, sit on there or sorry stick on there evenly so I'm going to make that adjustment. Now to cut the length I'm just going to roll the vase over the film and then I'm going to just mark it off where it ends and that will determine how much I need. I've used this beautiful window cling in a past video and I just thought it was just so so beautiful. It definitely has a very pretty pattern. So I'm just going to mark off with a pencil where I need to cut just to make sure I get the right spot. And the beautiful thing about this uh, window cling is that it has some lines on the back so you know you're going to cut it straight. So I'm just going to double check that I measured it right and I did. Okay, so now I'm going to grab some archival ink in leaf green, sorry, fern leaf green and I'm just using a makeup sponge and I'm going to apply this all over the window cling. Now the thing with this, you don't have to do this. This is optional. You could just leave yours plain, but I really liked the look that this gives and it just, I don't know, it just makes it a little bit more earthy, if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to continue to add as much as I need. This is a light coating. I decided to dab some more just in spots here and there just to create a bit more um, interest to the window cling. Again, this is completely optional. You just want to make sure you're using a permanent ink. Once you've applied it, you'll want to set it aside and allow the ink to set. Once it's set, you can then peel off the backing and adhere this to the vase. Now, I have to admit, I struggled a little bit with this. I tried to do it just as you see me doing here where I'm slowly removing the backing, but I don't know, for some reason, I just couldn't get it straight. It was a little off kilter and it was enough that you could really notice. So I just continued to work on it here and I kept on lifting it, reapplying it. I was getting frustrated at this point. So I'm like, oh, okay, let's try it this way. So I ended up pulling all of it off and then I just laid it down flat, pushed my vase into it and just rolled the vase. And surprisingly enough, I got it exactly the way I needed it. It wasn't crooked at all. I just lifted it a little bit just to smooth out the ends to make sure that they were sticking well. So this is removable. So if you end up not liking this anymore, you can just take it off and use it for another project. All right, so Dollar Tree has these berry garlands. They carry them in the fall and in the winter, but I don't know if they carry them in the spring. I haven't had seen that, but I like to use these to create some mini wreaths. So all I'm going to do is just measure how much I need to wrap around the base of my vase. And then I'm just going to start to twirl it around, twist it in amongst itself to create a very organic looking wreath. These berry garlands are great. It's this one's the red or sorry, the green and white one. And I think it's perfect for spring and summer. So I'm just going to continue to work the wire until I get a look I like. I ended up using one and a half strands of the garlands. Of course, if you already have a candle wreath that would work, then by all means use that. But I didn't have one, so I decided to make my own. 
I think the wreath looks great on the base of my vase. Now I'm going to show you what the flickering light looks like here and I'm going to put it in the vase black. Now I didn't actually end up using it black because I didn't like that you could really see that black coming through the vase. So I do end up painting it but I wanted to show you first what this looks like as is in the vase. Eh, it's so so. So let's transform it. These solar lights can be taken apart, which is awesome. It makes it so much easier to paint them if you choose to, which really gives them a much more high-end look. So I'm going to take all these pieces apart and then I'm going to use some painter's tape and paint, sorry, tape off the areas I don't want to get paint on. So I'm covering up the solar panel and I'm just creasing it with my fingernail and then I'm going to use a craft knife and just remove the excess because I want to make sure I get my paint on all the black surface that can be painted. So I'm also going to cover up the hardware that you see there where the battery is and cover that with the painter's tape as well. What's really nice about these solar lights is that you can actually change out the battery if it ends up uh, dying on you at any point. So I'm just going to continue to cover this portion up and then you'll see here that you can actually take the rest of this apart. I didn't realize at first that you could take this mesh portion out and you can and it folds out. It's going to make it so much easier to paint. So I'm going to use this heirloom satin white rust-oleum spray paint. I'm going to take this outside and spray it in a box and then you want to give it like one to two coats and just make sure you move it around so it doesn't stick to the surface of your box. It happened to me with this piece here and some of the paint peeled before it was completely set. The spray paint does take five to seven days to cure so keep that in mind. Of course I got impatient and I ended up having a problem. One trick I did do was that I lifted the wet pieces and moved them onto a dry cardboard box and that seemed to help but it was too late for this one at that point. So I'm going to start to put this back together. Now remember it's not fully cured at this point but I figured you know what I'm just going to go for it and put everything back together and you're not even actually going to see this once it's all put inside my vase anyways so uh, if you have any tips and tricks on how to spray paint better please leave me a suggestion down in the comment section I would really appreciate it so everything snapped it back together really well there was a slight resistance here and there but just with a little bit more force it popped into place I just removed the tape from the solar panel. I'm going to remove the battery tab and then I can glue this inside the vase. Now I'm just going to use hot glue because then if I ever want to reuse this it will pop off very easily but if you want you could use some silicone to keep it in place especially if you want this to be outside long term. I thought this would be really pretty outside on my patio or even um, in a little nook in my kitchen where I get lots of sunlight. Okay, so I grabbed one of these fence post solar lights and I actually kind of wish I would have grabbed a round one instead, but we're going to do this project using this square one because it's what I had on hand. As you can see, you can undo the screws in the back and that is going to open it up so you can access that battery again. Now, when you do this project, you don't have to do this if you don't want but there's a reason why I did it like this and I'll show you here in a minute. So I'm going to put this back together but I'm not putting the screws back in place. Now I am going to take some painter's tape and I'm going to paint off the light portion and then I'm also going to tape off the solar panel. Again I'm just going to use my craft knife just to make sure I get a precise cut line so I know that I'm going to get the proper coverage and I won't get any paint or whatnot on the rest of this. I don't want to cover up that little solar panel or the light with any paint. 
So this time around, I decided to use a sanding block to rough up the surface of the plastic. Now, maybe I should have done that for the previous project as well. I'm not sure, but I did it with this one. And the reason is because I am applying some gesso to the surface. Now, gesso is a primer that artists use to prep their substrate for their art. I like to use it under craft paints that I'm going to use, especially on plastics, or if there's any dark color that I also want to cover up, such as this. So I'm going to apply two coats of the gesso. I usually just apply one, but the black was really showing through. I'm applying this to the entire surface of the piece. So now I'm going to dig into my stash of some beautiful tissue papers. You can use some napkins as well, but I find tissue paper to be a lot stronger. So I'm just going to tear this up into small pieces and Dollar Tree has some beautiful patterns. Of course, feel free to use anything that you like. I'm using these leaves, but uh, I have seen some beautiful floral ones as well. So my gesso is all nice and dry. I'm just going to pop the back because I want to make sure that it doesn't seal around the edges. So that's the reason why I kept on, you know, checking the back. I just don't want the edge to seal off because if I need to change that battery, I'm going to. So I'm using some outdoor Mod Podge. I'm co giving a coat, uh, just working in little sections. I've never used this before. This is my first time and I have to say this stuff is quite thick. I don't usually like to use the brand Mod Podge because I find it just remains way too tacky here in my area, but I've really been wanting to try out the outdoor stuff as it says that it's a lot more durable. Now, if you're going to use it just as is, you will have to keep it in a protected area. So just keep that in mind. I am going to be sealing mine so I can put this out into the elements as at least that's what my plan is. So. You just place some glue down, put the tissue paper into place and add a layer of the decoupage over top. And then I'm just going to overlap my pieces as well to make sure I get a nice beautiful pattern all over this solar light. So my thought was that this would be really pretty just to lay them on the ground throughout your flower bed or in your garden. I thought it would be a beautiful little touch rather than just having just the plain old black solar light just laying around. I thought this would be a really fun and pretty and whimsical surprise in your garden. So that's why I thought maybe the round ones would work better. But again, like I said, I just, I grabbed these ones. So I'm just going to use what I have. I'm just going to continue to work on this piece until I get the entire piece covered. Now I do end up doing something different on the bottom and I kind of wish that I would have continued the decoupage, but I thought, well, I'm not sure how the bottom's going to react to the ground if it's decoupage. So I just decided to paint that out and I'll show you that here in a moment. So again, I'm just going to pop that bottom piece off. Remember, I don't want that to seal up around the edges. And I also wanted to remove all that excess paper that was left behind after it had all dried. So I was trying to cut it off, but I ended up using my fingers to tear it off instead. Um, I didn't use uh, sandpaper because I didn't want to damage the edges and remove any of the paint. So I popped the bottom back on and now I'm going to paint that. I'm using some chalk paint to cover the back, but of course use any paint that you'd like. Remember, I'm going to be sealing this all up with some clear sealant. So just keep that in mind. So I am also using a clean protected surface because this thing is tacky and that's the reason why I'm not crazy about Mod Podge. I took my piece outside and sprayed it with some clear sealer. It's all nice and dry. I put the panel back in place on the back and put the screws in and then I'm just going to cut around to, and lift the uh, painter's tape to expose the solar panel as well as the light portion of this piece and then you can put it outside. I'll let you know how this holds up for the summer season.
So this particular solar light from Dollar Tree is actually new to me and I really like the shape and I actually really like the glow that the light had. Believe it or not, this one can snap apart as well. So you just have to be careful when you're taking it apart as there's a lot of little tiny pieces that could snap. You just have to gently work away until the pieces let loose. They are built to snap into each other. Like this part here has got kind of a little hook. So you just have to kind of bend it gently to pop it out. This clear part also comes out which is awesome because again, we are going to be painting this piece. So I'm going to take everything apart that I can. This part here comes off again. I'm just going to take the screws out and I'm going to set those aside. We don't want to lose those little screws. They're small. I'm going to pop this panel off as well. And then you can see how everything is exposed underneath. And now I'm going to start to prep this piece to uh, paint. So again, I'm going to cover up that little solar light panel. We do not want to get paint on there. <laughs> I feel like a broken record, but it's true. We don't because that'll affect uh, how much power it gets. So I'm just going to, again, just tape that off. So I'm actually kind of curious, have any of you used these solar lights for any really fun outdoor projects? If you have, let me know. I, I'm really curious. I've seen lots of other people do some neat things, uh, but I'm actually wondering what kind of neat things you have done with these. So again, I'm gonna rough up the surface with my sanding block, and then I'm going to use my gesso again but I actually am going to show you a really neat gesso that you can get and I'm going to share another option with you as well. So did you know that you can get black gesso? Yes you can. This is the Deco Art brand. It's a nice smooth consistency. As you can see it works really well on a surface like this. You can also get clear gesso. Now I have some and you get it in the Liquitex brand and it is a little bit more expensive but of course on a surface like this you could use a clear and it works really really well. So I really like this black. Of course it's fitting for a piece like this and the reason why I'm going with black is because I actually do need a black surface for the painting technique that I am going to show you. So I'm going to cover the entire piece where I'm going to be painting with this gesso and I'm going to allow it to dry. Now to speed up drying, you can of course use a blow dryer or something like that, but typically I set my pieces aside underneath a vent that blows down from the ceiling and allow things to dry while I work on other projects. Here I'm using Burnt Umber and Burnt Sierra, sorry, Burnt Sienna to create a rusted finish. So what you want to do is just take some of your Burnt Umber first, apply a little bit here and there and then dab it off with a rag and you can see the depth and dimension that you're creating. So it's definitely a really good idea to start off with a black surface you're going to create kind of that rusted wrought iron look. So I'm going to just continue to work on this piece. You can see the difference between the two pieces there. And then if you want some more definition, you can continue to go in and add some more paint until you get a look that you are happy with. So to continue on with the rusting technique, I am now going to use my burnt sienna. Again, same thing, apply some, dab it off, but I'm going to be using a little bit less of this color. Again, we're just creating that depth and dimension that you will see on a rusted old piece. So you can really see how old and rusty that these pieces are looking. So I am just going to continue to do this on all my pieces. I'm really liking how everything is turning out so far and just so you know, I did apply a little bit on the inside because you will see those inside panels, but I didn't do the full technique because it's not really going to be no that noticeable. So I'm going to allow everything to dry well. And then you can see, isn't that just such a cool finish? Next, I'm going to be using some matte decoupage and some cinnamon. Now this part is optional. I just, again, wanted to create a more realistic look. So I'm going in, adding a little bit of my 
decoupage glue here and there and then using a brush I'm going to go into my cinnamon and dabbing that on top use a rag and remove the excess now just so you know I do keep the cinnamon set aside just for crafting so you can kind of see the unique look that it's having so far it's not going to look exactly like this when we are all done but if you do decide to leave it this way then I highly recommend that you keep this piece inside and you can do the same for any of our pieces that we're making today you can leave them inside just make sure you place them in a nice sunny bright spot so that they can charge up for the day so I'm just going to go ahead and continue to add some decoupage glue and some cinnamon to my pieces until again I get a look that I am happy with. I'm really really happy with how this is turning out so far. Again, I'm going to give this a coat of my Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Sealant. I took it outside and sprayed it in a, uh, in a cardboard box, allowed it to dry well. And this seals the piece. I gave it two to three coats. And you can see that what happened is it gave the cinnamon gave a corroded look to these pieces. It's a really, really cool look. It makes it more realistic. So I'm going to put all my pieces back together. The sealer does take five to seven days to fully cure, so just keep that in mind. Uh, just be careful that you don't accidentally uh, remove this um, finish that you've created. So I'm gonna put the screws back into place to put that panel back into place. And I'm gonna snap all the other pieces in. Just be careful that you don't actually uh, accidentally break any of those pieces. I have to say I am so pleased with how well that paint finish turned out. So you could use the stake that comes with this solar light for your ground support, but I wanted to make my own. So I grabbed this branch that I had in my stash from foraging. I'm just going to cut it down and I decided that I'm going to leave some of the limbs on just to kind of create a more natural look. And I am just trimming off the top so I can place it in the bottom of my solar light. It was a little loose, but I'm gonna use this Gorilla silicone sealant. This stuff works really, really well for outdoors. I'm just filling out up the hole underneath and I'm gonna place my stick into place. Now, I am gonna be using a bit of hot glue around this. This just helped to hold it into place while it's setting and I just apply some hot glue, allow it to cool down for a little bit, and then I'm gonna use my finger and just wipe off any excess. Now, my glue gun is a bit of a lower temp glue gun, so I made it really easy to do this, uh, but just be careful, and you can also use some finger protectors. I did end up painting the glue so you wouldn't see it, and now you can just see how awesome that looks. I'm just going to remove the tape off the solar panel, remove the little tab for the battery, and then you can put it outside or in your home in a nice bright sunny spot. I think this parrot piece turned out so, so cool. If you're looking for some more really cool outdoor ideas, then check this video right here to the right. I appreciate each and every one of you for joining me today and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.